Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to today's CIM Marketing Club webinar, Boost Your Employability with Pamela Barotti, Head of Customer Advocacy at Microsoft UK, who will cover a how-to guide to get into marketing career, including attitude and behavioral traits to be successful in marketing, and what it's like to work for Microsoft and Claire Kemsley, UK and Ireland Marketing Managing Director at Hayes, who will give us a snapshot of the workforce skills and job function needs across marketing. And Claire will also talk about um, the Hayes report on equality, diversity and inclusion. And then there's me, Johnny Crawley, and I'm Learner Partnership Manager at the Chartered Institute of Marketing and your host for today's session. So, um, Marketing Club, what is it? Um, so, CI Marketing Club has been created to support um, aspiring marketers. Um, so, we provide useful insights into the world of marketing and tools and tips to be successful in marketing today and in the future. Uh, the Marketing Club delivers a series of webinars. This is one of them, um, and they're free to attend. So, if you enjoy today's session, it'd be great to welcome you back to a later session. Um, we have additional webinars running in November. January, February, March, and April. So keep an eye out for those. Um, and both CIM members and non-members are welcome to attend these webinars. Um, CIM Marketing Club updates. So if you want to learn a little bit more about what we're doing um, and basically keep in touch with when our webinars are, um, you can receive Marketing Club updates. So simply unlock your phone um, and use the camera lens on, on your phone and, and hover over the QR code that you should see on your screen now. Um, that will then give you regular updates uh, and also provide you the current um, content to, to designed to support your learning. Uh, and it will also actively manage your professional development by keeping you up to date with latest trends, innovations and concepts in, in marketing industry. Now, I'd like to hand over to our first presenter, Pamela Barotti, Head of Customer Advocacy at Microsoft UK. Uh, over to you, Pamela. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. So I'm Pamela Barotti, and it is a pleasure to uh, meet you all. I, you know, as Johnny said, I'm the head of customer advocacy for Microsoft UK. So in my role, I have the privilege to work with my team to bring customer stories to life. So we showcase how our customers are using Microsoft technology to transform the business, better serve the customers and boost employee morale. And you know, some customers such as Voice Voice, BP, NatWest, uh, as well as some very interesting startups like Moneybox and RecycleY. The content we created is then used across the entire marketing mix to celebrate customer success while it helped Microsoft to drive awareness for, the, for a brand, for solutions in both UK and international markets. But I would love to share with you a little bit of my journey. So I, uh, you probably heard, you know, but for now, like you might have it, uh, realized that I am not from the UK. So I'm actually from Brazil and I studied marketing and advertising in Brazil before moving to, to London. So now I have over you know, 15 years in experience in marketing, working for startups as well as global companies, the likes of Microsoft, Amazon, Mastercard, Oracle, among others. But when I moved here 12 years ago, you know, I made sure I just finished my degree in marketing in Brazil. I had a, you know, experience in marketing there. So when I moved here, my goal was to first improve my English. And uh, then I said, well, you know, I'm going to learn English, improve my skills. Maybe I do a short course or a postgraduate and then I go back to Brazil. However, after being in London for just a week, I fell in love with the queen, with the weather, with so many amazing opportunities in you know, London and the UK uh, has to offer. So I decided to stay. I said, wow, I want to build my career in marketing here. And I have to share, you know, it wasn't easy because it was in the end of 2008. So there was a global financial crisis going on. You know, I mentioned I was, I didn't speak English fluently. I was on a student visa and I had no contacts here. 
But I always believe that if you're very clear about your dream or your goal or what you want to achieve, and if you create a plan, you can work hard, you can achieve it. So that's what I did. I said, great, to build a career in marketing here, I needed three Ps. And first one, I said, great, I want to, I need a postgraduate, right, to boost my knowledge and my CV. So I did the postgrad with, with the chapters of marketing because that really helped me to understand that, you know, the, the UK market, the global market, and um, also, you know, gave me more credibility because it, even though I studied in a great university in Brazil, uh, not many people knew my university here. So I thought that is going to help me. Then I needed a, a passport, right? Because I was here on a student visa and back then I could only work 20 hours a week. So it was very hard for me. It was impossible to get a proper job in marketing. So before you, you wonder, you know, if I got married for passport reasons, no. Look, I, my grandfather was Italian, so I was able to apply for the citizenship and then, you know, live here as European. Of course, that was before Brexit. But that's for another webinar. And then last but not least, I said, great, you know, like I have a lot of experience in Brazil, but the UK market is a different market. So I start doing, uh, you know, volunt I, sorry, I did some internships in marketing, you know, I volunteer to build my experience here. And I have to say, you know, it was quite, it was quite tough. You know, it was a big change. It was my first time actually traveling abroad. You know, so England's my first country that I visit outside Brazil. You know, my early twenties with no contacts, in the middle of a global crisis. So I, I'm telling you, right? If I could make it, I'm sure you can, right? You already have, you know, your passport sorted, or hopefully, you know, you have, and you already speak English. So I'm telling you, you are ahead of the game. But what I want to share is, uh, let's look now, you know, the, the experience. So I share with you, you know, some companies that I work for and I mentioned some on the screen. So the interesting thing of my career is that I thought that I would join a company, work hard, continue my education and make it. However, given the current climate, um, there hasn't been such a straight line. You know, I work for companies as an employee, contractor, consultant, you know, in different, uh, in different markets, I mean, covering different markets and doing different things in marketing. So what I've learned is that nowadays, careers are jungle gym, not a ladder. And I have here, of course, you know, on the screen, like an image to, uh, to illustrate, right? If you go to a playground, there is a kind of the, the thing that you can play and you go up, you go down, you go to, to the right, to the left. And that is most, and to be honest, that's very likely what your career is going to be. I mean, maybe you are going to be lucky enough to join a company and, and stay there. Great. However, given the cl current climate that we live, right, with it, you know, post COVID and changing technology, and even most jobs that are going to be available in the next few years, the window exists today. I wanted to make sure that you keep this, you know, flexible mindset. Which means is that if you're finishing your degree now and you're struggling to get a job, don't worry, right? I'm going to share with you some tips, but bear in mind, you know, get the job you can, get the skills, deliver, you know, value to the organizations, and then you can move to the next one. So let's start with the top tips, right? So first, for you to be successful, you need to think about your softs and your technical skills. So soft skills are, you know, your capabilities when it comes to, you know, presenting, negotiating, influencing, being creative. Technical skills is all around, you know, can you understand the strategy? Uh, are you able to understand it and uh, data and use that in your day-to-day uh, -day job? Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Uh, topic because you know Claire has amazing stats to share like what are the top soft and technical skills so just wait a little bit and you're going to learn more but it's very important when you think about your employability it's not about knowing uh, how you know social media works or how brand works which is important but you also need to think about it right your presentation negotiation and your influencing skills just to name a few now, get experience. And you'll probably say, Pamela, really? 
I know, but I don't have any experience. And most jobs that I want to apply, they require experience. Yes, I hear you. So here are some ideas of how you can build an experience. So if you're at a university, right, if you are, for example, taking some extracurricular activities, let's say you are you know, volunteer as the football coach, or you are leading the students group at the college, that's great because you are building your uh, leadership skills, project management skills, and you can always use that you knowing your CV and your experience when interviewing. You can also look online. I mean, of course, I work for Microsoft, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ask you to Google. I'm gonna ask you to Bing it. <laughs> and a volunteer marketing job. There are so many organizations that sometimes they might be small and they cannot afford to pay someone full time. So why don't you volunteer? Get experience, learn because that's gonna help you to stand out in a crowd market. I also want to share with you this platform here uh, called Paint My Calls. So that is a charity that was launched years ago, but actually a friend of mine, Post, Post Skinner. And uh, basically charities, they post their calls. So let's say if your charity needs help with their website, with social media or events, they're gonna post there. And marketeers or people that are interested in marketing, they can uh, apply for those jobs. And I think that is great because that is a way for you to get experience you know and, and do something for good so again right there are many ways for you to build your experience so keep an open mind and be creative next one find a mentor again i'm sure this is not new to you but i want to send you the right place so the charges of marketing has an amazing mentoring program you can search your mentors you can look for you know specifically in you know, a region uh you know uh, knowledge they have expertise industries so again, you know, you can join and see what industry do you want to work in. It's in the built industry or in technology. So you can find mentors in the industry that can help you, you know, potentially to build your career faster. Next one, it is about creating an executor plan because I have to say, of course, I'm sharing a lot of tips and ideas with you. Claire has some fantastic stats and, and advice. However, if you don't get clear, on what you wanted. If you don't create a plan, if you don't take action, nothing's gonna happen. So be clear on your goal. What is that you wanted? And always phrase in a, in a positive and in a personal manner. So you can either write down or you can have on your phone. I don't mind, but have it somewhere. Make sure that it's either you type or you write. For example, I'm working as a marketing manager at Microsoft or I'm working as a marketing intern at my local college, whatever it might be. Because by writing down, you get more, you get more clarity. You know, Harvard uh, research shows that just by writing down, you increase the, uh, the probability that you're gonna achieve the goal by over 80%. So that's great. So make sure you have that very clear. And then what are you going to do to achieve that goal, right? Whether it is volunteering or boost your skills, or uh, you know, networking, and when are you gonna do that? Don't worry, right? The plan is not gonna be you know, set in stone. It's gonna change, right? Particularly in the current environment, but that's great. Use as a starting point. If you say, Pamela, I wanna work in marketing, but I don't know what industry or area, that's fine. That could be your goal, right? I'll learn more. So you can go to uh, online conferences, you can speak to people, find a mentor. But be clear what is that you wanted and take action. And now I'm going to share with you, like train your mindset, because for me, you know, in order to build it, you know, the, the career of my dreams, I really had to get the right skills, you know, get the uh, you know, experience, but also have the right mindset. And I'm going to share with you here some tips based on neuroscience, right? So everything I'm sharing here are uh proven uh are things that have been researched extensively so first one i want to talk about reticular activating system so again just in a very simple manner uh basically that's 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 what we also call our as it's based on the on your brain right so it's like here around here in the brain so basically this part of your brain makes a decision of what you're going to focus on 
right? Because I think we all know any given time we are bombarded with so much stimulus. And that is almost like works as a filter to filter what we're going to pay attention, we're going to perceive. I'm going to give an example. So I don't have kids, but my friends who have, they said that when they were pregnant or when their wife was pregnant, they started seeing small kids everywhere or pregnant women. Why? Because that is on the level of awareness. On a personal example, so when I uh, went to university in Brazil, like the first year, no, the university was quite far from my home. I had to drive. So my, my father gave me a car. It was a you know, brand new black Ford Fiesta. I call it Bob. And I have to share, guys, as soon as I left the dealer, I start seeing black Ford Fiesta everywhere. And Ford wasn't running any special campaign or promotion. Why I was seeing it? Because that was on my awareness. Uh, so what does it got? What has got? Sorry. What is Bob got to do with your job search? Everything, right? So if you get clear about what you wanted to achieve and focus on it, you're gonna train your mind, your mindset to look for the opportunities. Whether you maybe you're looking on LinkedIn and you see an opportunity or you are you know, reading a newspaper and you see, wow, there's a course I can do. So it's all about focusing on what you want. Next is visualization for success. So this, this technique is used by so many uh, you know, successful business people, by athletes. It's very simple. So maybe before you go to sleep, close your eyes and visualize yourself you know, doing the job that you want. You know, what does it feel like, right? What does it sound like? Like, what can you see? Because the brain doesn't really get the difference between, uh, you know, reality you know, and imagination. And by feeling that, you are training yourself for maximizing your, your chance for success. But guys, I got to say, you can visualize for the rest of your life. But if you don't have a plan, if you don't take action, nothing's going to happen, right? So those tools is almost like a top up you know, on the top of the hard work that we were doing. And next one, I want to talk about emotions, because again, you know, for you to boost your employability is skills, yes, is the experience, but how you turn up. And this slide, actually, this image is from uh, Dr. Joy Dispenza. He is a well-known neuroscientist, and he, you know, he talks about it, how the emotions create certain chemicals in the body. And he also, you know, as you can see on the screen, he classified emotions into two groups, creative emotions. So these are kind of the good ones, right? Gratitude, love, joy, inspiration. And the other one, the survive emotions. So let's say those that perhaps you don't love feeling, right? Which is doubt, anger, fear. So the point of this slide is not for you to suppress, you know, your survive emotions. Not at all. You certainly can I know, acknowledge it and feel it. However, what I'm just raising on awareness is that the thoughts you're going to have are going to create certain emotions in your body. And those emotions are going to create chemicals. They're going to impact how your brain works. So, for example, and you don't need to be a neuroscientist, right? Let's say if, when you feel stressed, you know, if you haven't slept or if you feel angry, it's going to be very difficult for us to, you know, to be creative, to come up with new ideas, you know, to be your best version. So what I'm encouraging you here is be mindful of the emotions that, you, you know, you're feeling and do your best to start your day on the good emotions, doing something that brings you joy, whether it is, you know, running or doing yoga or singing, whatever it might be, because that puts you in a good frame of mind to create better chemicals to improve your performance. And that is not about ignoring the reality or pretending everything is positive and everything's perfect. Not at all. Yes, there are so many, you know, challenges happening in the world with everyone. So, but if you start your day, if you set your mindset from what is going on well, if you get the great chemicals in the body, you have more, you know, power. You have more creativity to tackle the issues and to show up in your community, in your school, in your work as your best version. So 
now, you know, talking about careers at Microsoft, because of course, you know, every time I, I do a, a keynote or a talk, I say, Pamela, I'd love to work for Microsoft. What is life? I have to say, you know, I mentioned I work for so many different companies in my career, and Microsoft has one of the best cultures I have experienced. I have to say, we really live your mission every day. It's really about empowering every person organization to achieve more. And here we say, come as you are and do what you love. That means that it doesn't matter, you know, your background or, you know, what you look like, if you have this ability. No, it is a place for you to come and do your best job. So I highly recommend you to look at your careers website. You know, you always have a Prince program, uh, graduates, uh, jobs for the experienced, uh, experienced professionals. So uh, there's a lot of different uh, opportunities. And of course, because Microsoft is a well-known company and brand, you know, we get a lot of applications. So even if the first or second time, if you're not successful, you know, keep trying, keep doing, because if that's a company you want to work for, uh, I, I recommend you, you know, work on your skills, uh, your soft skills, your technical skills, you know, network, apply. And uh, if that's something, you know, you really want to, to, to do and, and, you know, have that great company on your uh, CV. So, so that's me, you know, so I just want to wrap up just to say thank you so much for listening. I'd love to connect with you all on LinkedIn, as you can see here, uh, Pamela Barotti. And to recap, you know, making sure you have a you know, clear goal, you're working your skills, in your experience, and manage your mindset. And I firmly believe that you can be, do, and have it, whatever you wanted, as long as you're clear and you work hard for it. Thank you for listening. Now, back to you, Johnny. Great, thank you, Pamela. That was a really insightful presentation. Thank you for that. Um, so now on to our next presenter, uh, Claire Kemsley. She is UK and Ireland Marketing Managing Director at Hayes. And this will be our final presentation of this afternoon uh, before we move into the question and answer session. So over to you, Claire. My name is Claire Kemsley and um, I'm a UK Marketing uh, Director for Hayes Marketing as a recruitment specialist. And just ignore me going through my slides at a pace, I'm just getting back to the beginning for you. Um, the reason I'm here today is because I think it's so important to share with you as much as we can from a knowledge perspective about what's happening in your world today or the world that you're um, going to be moving into. What I wanted to start with um, was to give you uh, an insight into the world of marketing and the sheer volume of roles that are out there at the moment, why marketing is such a sought after skill set at the moment. There are about 21,000 marketing roles out there advertised directly by brands, by customers. That doesn't include any of the um, jobs that we may have at any of the agencies that you see um, um, advertising on behalf of clients. A lot of those jobs might be confidential or they might be new roles. And at the moment, just to give you an insight, the top five job titles in demand in marketing are marketing manager, product manager, online marketer, marketing assistant, and communications, which is really interesting because what that shows us is that the depth and breadth of marketing knowledge is still highly sought after. Now, in a digital world, the evolution of marketing has meant we've moved far more from analog through to using the technology and uh, Pamela talked about those um, skill sets briefly. Thank you for that, Pamela. On the skill set have now come to the fore because of the use of technology. Now, if you can see this slide, which shows the key areas of digital expertise, what we've, what we've put here is marketing right at the heart of any business. Marketing should sit in the place where strategy planning and operations take place. What we've shown you here, I call this the honeycomb. I know it isn't, but it was put together by a fabulous um, digital director lady for us called Julia. She was the international digital marketing director for International Hotel Group. And she put this slide uh, together for us to show us how the roles in marketing were going to be impacted by technology. A lot of you will have heard of a lot of these roles today, but a lot of the skill sets that sit in UX, for example, um, that sit in actually SEO, that it in, sit in insights are becoming more and more prevalent in your world of marketing today. And the reason that is, is because most of the primary functions, most of the roles that you will enter into when you first start your career with marketing, 
tend to sit around the, the need for an understanding of analytics. So whether your first role is involved in social media, whether it's content, data, or a generous marketing role, there will be an element of analytics in that job specification. This skill set, by the way, is still one of the biggest skill shortages across every level of marketeer in the UK. And don't worry if you don't have a, a, a gravitas, a, a deep understanding of analytics now. And this is just to show you that as you move through into from study, your first role, your need to acquire. And I think Pamela's story, a fabulous achiever, Pamela, is a great person, uh, and I'm privileged to share the platform with Pamela today. What Pamela's story is all about, her own narrative is about learning, continually learning, being aware of what you may need to know to be able to put yourself forward to those great career moves that you seek in the future. Every year in Hayes, we do a salary survey guide. Now, I'm, I'm not going to talk to you about the data um, of the salary standings within marketing and the benefits. You're welcome to have um, a link to this, by the way, and you can have a look at actually what does the uh, price of, of, of a marketer look like today, depending on skill set. You're welcome to have that. What I really wanted to use this for today was to show you some of the insights that come out of this data research. We researched between 20 and 25,000 employees and employers for, for this, um, uh, this data. So that from that data set, we can find some insights that we can share with you um, that have impacted the world in the last year, uh, marketing comms and the wider sphere, and that may continue to impact uh, over the next year. So just, let's just spend one moment to reflect. What impacted business last year? What impacted the role of the marketeer last year? What massively impacted the role of the communications director? Of course, COVID-19. But it wasn't just COVID-19. Brexit. Brexit was huge. It was a massive impact on the way that we're going to operate with our European partners for many, many years to come. It obviously impacted massively on how marketeers, brands, we're going to begin to look at potentially a new audience in a new way. What new products were the brands going to come and come up with during this time of Brexit to ensure they could retain or acquire new customers? And just it's quite important for you to understand legislative changes that can impact the role of marketing and communications person. IR35 was a massive impact in the world of recruitment, in the world of HR, because it impacts how you operate as maybe a temp or a contractor. In the world of marketing many of you will gain some brilliant experience some brilliant experience by doing temporary or contract roles i know most marketers at some stage have dipped their toe into the water of contract and and, and interim work and that is in fact where you can gain some very good skill sets potentially some of those roles can be quite specific so you may be offered the opportunity to do some copywriting in a comms role you might be offered in a temporary role the opportunity to learn a bit more about seo at any stage in your career, if you have a space where you're not in a permanent role, or indeed make a choice that in fact you want to gain a lot of your experience in marketing in different companies, in different sectors, through the word of contract, um, it's well worth thinking about. It's well worth thinking about. But that impact, the R35 impact, was a huge impact for business, for marketers and communications people last year, alongside COVID and alongside Brexit. And 81% of businesses now believe, by the way, that we will never go back to operating in the same working patterns that we did before. That really worked. So depending on where you live now, doesn't necessarily mean you can't apply for those jobs further afield. We've got lots and lots of marketing and comms teams that are still working 100% remote. Some have agreed to a hybrid working pattern, so they might be going into their teams two days a week and then staying at home three days a week. We've got some roles that are still completely remote five days a week. So the working pattern and the marketplace you're going to enter now is going to be very, very different to that of 18 months, two years ago, and 81% of marketing employers believe it will stay the same. This data on the slide here is just to give you some encouragement. You know, 67% of those marketers that we spoke to over the last six months said we're going to recruit in 2021. The 77% is the big challenge though. They are really struggling to find the experienced skills that they need. And we haven't got a slide to show you, but I can confirm 61% of marketeers who are currently employed, so people who are currently working in a marketing role, are looking to change their job this year. So the market is busy, 
the market opportunity for you to enter the market, to maybe make a career move within the market, to, 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 to take yourself forward in your own career journey is, 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 is very real uh, at the moment. So what top skills are employers looking for when it comes to marketing? Well, interestingly, as Pamela touched on, soft skills and technical. Communication skills are highly sought after at the moment. You would expect that in marketing. And actually, a lot of people say to me when they're moving into the marketing place for the first time, how can I get those communication skills? How can I know, actually, what my own communication skills look like? There are many, many different techniques you can use to improve your communication skills from basically practicing your body language to learning how to negotiate or deliver positive, uh, positive change. Um, we have lots of micro learning on our learning site. And again, you'll be given that information at the end of today's time. So you can go on um, to the site and have a look at some specific courses around communication, around body language. So you can practice and have a look and kind of work out where you might stand. This ability to adopt and by the way, to adapt has never been so prevalent. Obviously, because of the last 18 months, the majority of us have, if we can, have worked from home for a period of time. We've had to adopt and adapt the way we work. And the adopt piece here is the key. I've adapted potentially to working on MS Teams 10 hours a day or five hours a day. But have I adopted it? Not really. I find it very difficult. I'd much rather be out there with people in the world I used to know. But I've had to adopt it. So adopt and adapt being flexible. Those are key, key skill sets that marketers you know, are looking for at the moment. They're very, very important. And just to break it down into the specialist skills versus the soft, so those technical skills, actually data and analytics, 30% um, of the specialist skills required today are data and analytics. What is interesting though for you, um, and Pamela and I have touched on this in the past, are that the overall overarching knowledge of marketing that depth and breadth of knowledge is still really important. 51% of the people we surveyed said, I really want someone to understand the whole marketing function. That's very important. Um, but equally, there is a space, a bigger space coming for that understanding of data analytics and how important it is. And as you can see, the soft skills, the ability to adopt communication and problem solving. You will have a lot of these skills you may just never have used them in the workplace or you might not have used them in the context of your marketing learning, but you will have some of these skills. Um, and at the end of this presentation there, again, there are some tips on how, how we can practice and try and put out in our CV and out maybe in our interview moment, those skill sets we have, even if we've not worked in the marketing workplace. The great and exciting thing for me is that marketing employees, uh, marketing fraternity, comms fraternity, are forever wanting to, to study. And again, this is reflected in, in, in Pamela's own narrative and her own story, her, her, her journey. You know, 82% of employees say, I'm going to upskill. I am going to undertake some professional qualification. I am going to learn. Marketers are by far and away the profession that I've seen are continuing on a learning journey. Obviously, you're the voice of the customer. Obviously, you need to, to, to meet the needs of the customer. So you need to be at the forefront of not only the insights that you may get from the business to equip you to acquire and retain customers, you also need to do that for yourself. And interesting, marketers such as yourselves have said, when it comes to thinking about where I might go to work, it's really important. It's really important. 67% attraction and 71% retention are directly correlated to learning, the, up, the ability to upskill. So um, what, what I thought we'd share with you today, somewhat briefly, is the latest piece of research we've done. We do research into your world once or twice a year. And the latest research we've done is in fact on EDNI. Now, EDNI obviously is, is an unbelievably large, complex, and truly important subject. What I've tried to do today is just to show you how the marketing and comms fraternity, your profession, feel about EDNI at the moment. We did a survey across 17 different professional sectors. So that was IT, purchasing, logistics, finance, and of course, marketing. We do this particular survey every year and have there been an impact do we think um, looking at our all of our behavior the behavior of a business um, during the pandemic some of this data by the way is uncomfortable um, so we asked who agrees that action on EDI is happening overall employees and employers believe 
that there has been some action, 48%. But the whole ethos of this particular survey was, are we just paying lip service or are we indeed seeing action? Now, if we look at what marketeers feel here, 62% say that employer actively talks about ED&I, but only a third believe their employer combines discussion with notable action. If we move a bit further on, this slide I find, as I say, quite uncomfortable reading. I've been sharing this data and having brilliant conversations uh, with your marketing fraternity for about the last probably three months. There is a lot of data that we, we, we spend a lot of time discussing. Today, we don't have that opportunity, but I'm happy to share more information with anyone that would like it and the survey indeed itself. So groups that do not feel they have an equal opportunity to succeed. You know, the uncomfortable reading here is that we, you know, we are in a world that talks lip service, that talks about eating all the time. And yet these particular groups of people do not feel that they have an equal opportunity when it comes to succeeding in their role. If we move further forward, we can look at some of the data pertinent to, to the world that you're going to be moving into. And the percentage I, I reflect on more than anything on this, this screen is 9%. Only 9% of marketing, PR and comms professionals really believe that there'll be equal opportunities in the next five years. Now, when you're in the world of marketing comms, as I've referred to before, you are the voice of the customer. But equally, if you're in marketing comms, you're the team, you're the, the hub that set the true values of the business. You set the values of the business and you support the growth of the culture of the business. So at another time, we can spend the, in, some time interrogating this particular piece of data. Lots of organizations have said to me, actually, you know, we do feel responsible in marketing comms. We, you know, from the internal comms perspective, are we sharing the great stuff we are doing um, or, or are we just paying lip service and not action? So marketing really plays a fairly pivotal role you know, in, in, in the success of any ED&I policy that sits in a business. As you can see on the screen here, these are the factors um, that individuals feel led to their chances of being selected for a job being lowered. And as you can see, the differential from 21 to 2020 makes uncomfortable reading. There has been a slight move forward, as you can see, a small improvement, for example, 56% of professional site age uh, as a factor that led to their chance of being selected, compared to 63% last year. But frankly, if we look at um, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the other dependent status, neurodivergence, sexual orientation, we all need, obviously in society, to support them, these, these figures moving forward in a positive way. From Marty and Com's perspective, we hold alongside our HR teams responsibility for how do we make this happen. You know, moving from lip service to action is, 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 isn't easy. The data you can see here now, again, just relates to what marketeers, by the way, when I say marketeers, I mean marketeers, comms, and obviously the martech teams, anybody that works in the marketing world. You can see here that even half a portion of marketeers, 54%, feel that managers need more training. And those of you today that may have touched on some managerial experience or have worked potentially um, in a position, you know, everybody needs to be supported in their learning around the ED&I and they're learning about anything. As we've said all the way through Pamela's um, narrative and, and this presentation, learning, upskilling, keeping abreast of, of what's happening in the marketplace, knowing what might be a skill that I need later um, in my career. It's all about actually training ourselves but also the managers that we work for need support in some of these areas. And I think what's great, as I said about your, your, your world, your profession a few slides back, in marketing, managers really do want to understand. They do really want to be able to support the whole of the ED&I um, uh, world. As you can see again on the slide, you know, actually just under half, of marketing uh, individuals want their organisation to review its recruitment process. That is positive. It's we in marketing comms that we need to do something positive here. Communication, as we said before, one of the top soft skills, one of those skills that we really need to be good at in our world, in the world of marketing and comms, is about progress. 
So sometimes the organizations I speak to, the brands I talk to, the universities I talk to have made great progress, but they haven't communicated it. And there again, the internal comms team comes to the fore. It is their role to make sure that if we are doing great stuff around this initiative, that we actually make uh, it the opportunity for our own employees to hear and see, see what we're doing. It's the same for your customers. If you're a brand, your customers want to see what you're doing. They want to see how you're embracing change. They want to see that you are genuinely offering an equal opportunity to anybody from any, any, any demographic. Individuals will make decisions on whether they work for an operation, a business, a brand, based on their EGI policy. Equally, equally, they will also make decisions on the purpose of that business, because purpose is obviously really important to us as marketeers. So uh, it's not um, a comfortable subject, but it's a very important subject. And actually at interview, you will have an opportunity, potentially maybe, um, to, to, to give some thoughts around how you feel about ED and I. And so it, it's really um, important to be aware of what the market feels at the moment, what marketers see, what they see is lip service, what they see is action. So, so moving forward, um, obviously your, your, your tomorrow um, begins today. Um, and actually, I, I just want to be able to share a, a couple of slides here with you um, I, uh, uh, and, and talk about your world has changed. The post-pandemic world will be different, but your role will be so important. Is it equally, if not more important, as marketers come to people as it was before? And I do want you to be able to reflect and think about the positives uh, that will come out um, of, of, of these changes in the post-pandemic world. Um, you know, the way we look, look at our self today um, is slightly different. And, and I think what the last 18 months has done is, is given us the opportunity, really, to, to really think deeply about that. You know, as I said, to work for a purpose-led organisation, you know, to balance flexibility, our mental health is so important. And we will continue, you know, in your world to make career changes more swiftly than perhaps we did 10, 10, 15 years ago, we will also, because of hybrid stroke remote working, be able, as I say, to look at opportunities that potentially you might not have been able to look at before. But as our CEO said, whatever happens, the world is still going to need talented, talented people, marketers and comms people, uber talented people. So think positive and be positive. You know, we need to, as you can see on the slide, I, I put some thought starters, but we need to be open minded. We need to think about our career confidence. As Pamela said, we need a plan. Even if it's just a plan that works for us today and tomorrow and next month, depending on where we are and how we feel, if it's a plan for the next two years. But a plan is really important. Because if we make a plan, as Pamela said, and think about our career, our skills gaps, our soft skills gaps, our interview techniques, then we can action that plan. So make a plan and let's begin to action some of it for ourselves. We've got quite a lot of information um, on virtual interview tips for you, because interestingly, even though they had a move back to the workplace for a lot of organisations, as I said at the beginning, um, that there, there are still interviews being held virtually because not all organisations have gone back to their place of work where they want to be. So we can give you some, some real tips on if you're being interviewed virtually on how that looks like. I have whistle stopped through that. There is a lot of data. Um, you're more than welcome to access the presentation. Uh, thank you, um, and I hope it's been interesting. Um, and as I say, there's far more information on our website we can share. So now I'd like to hand back to Johnny for the Q&A. Brilliant. Thank you, Claire. That was uh, fascinating. Um, lots of uh, useful tips there. Um, we've got lots of questions, which is great. But I'll start off with one for, for both of you, actually. Um, the, this one, uh, feel free to, to jump in either. Um, do you have any useful tips for adapting effectively to change in the marketing environment and share the best way to stand out from competition? Um, well, I'll, I'll talk about the change piece if I want to talk about the standing out from the, the competition. Um, it, when, it's, when it comes to showing um, how you've adapted, it's always good to, 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 to be able to evidence something as an interview process or, or if you're thinking about how can I show uh, at work my ability to do that. So it's always worth thinking about something that's genuinely uh, being part of something you've done. It doesn't have to relate to the workplace. It does, certainly doesn't have to relate to marketing expertise. So as I say, for example, I hopefully I'm showing you with the problems I've had with my technology today, Johnny. Hopefully I'm showing you that I've actually been able to adopt this type of change. I've been able to do a presentation. I've been able to use this technology, uh, which previously I hadn't used very much. 
Um, now, to show my ability to adapt is probably probably the conversation I felt confident having with you, Johnny, because you were supported at the beginning, and I couldn't move my slides. Six months ago, as you know, Johnny, for all of us in this world, that would have been a disaster. We didn't know how to do it. We were concerned. We didn't have the, um, I don't know about all of you, but the internet connection at my home in the middle of Suffolk is very poor. I didn't have a very good laptop. I keep forgetting to put my headsets on so they can hear my dog barking. Now, I think I've shown my ability to adapt and hopefully adopt by, I'm not going to get stressed out about it. No one's judging me. It's the tech. We've sorted it and hopefully we've had a good space to reflect on our learning and skill sets today. So, I mean, that's just a very small way, Johnny, of, of how I would use if I was asked, uh, how have I changed, adopted and adapted? There's a real clear example. You've all seen it today. We're all still alive. Everything in the world is good. So that, that would just find something that genuinely you've had to do. It doesn't have to be a massive thing. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, Pamela, anything to add to that or do you want me to ask a, a different question? Great. No, I think that's that's fantastic. I think that, uh, you know, perhaps just on the second part of the question, right, which was about, you know, like, I guess, you know, how to stand out. Um, I guess for me, my advice is first, uh, identify your strengths. OK, uh, and sometimes, particularly for a younger career, if you're like, what are my strengths? But just write down what things you're good at. Right. What do you enjoy? What do things come to you naturally? And my suggestion to you is that focus on those areas. I mean, of course, you know, uh, as Clara said, yes, you need it. Let's say if you love being creative, but you also need to understand all the areas, right? Uh, data and analytics and things. But if you hate data, why do you want to be head of data? <laughs> Don't do that to yourself, right? Yes. <laughs> It's to their own, but right, get an knowledge, but focus on your strengths. So whether it is, you know, for the work that you do, or for example, if you want to get experience, you know, let's say you say you want to get experience, volunteer to get market experience. Finding a charity that is close to your heart. So I've been volunteering for the last seven years. I'm really passionate about helping and empowering people through coach and mentoring. So I got qualifications in the area and I also been uh volunteering in supporting charities on the area right and that helps me to stand out as well right when i apply for roles because it that you know helps me with my leadership skills my coaching skills so so that's my advice find things that you love it and build your excuse or experience or your it char you know charitable work everything around it because it otherwise won't be you won't be authentic and you won't be happy brilliant thank you um so a burning question. Uh, I think a lot of people are, are got excited by the fact um, that, that you work that you work for Microsoft and obviously um, some of the uh, other organisations that you flashed up there. Unsurprisingly, um, lots of people want to know um, how you got into that and also why you whether you chose to work for for Microsoft because of similar company um, alignments in terms of your values. Yeah. No, sure. That's a great question. I think I, I feel very, you know, generally very blessed that I've been able to work for so many amazing companies. And I'm so grateful for all the employers that gave me, you know, a job, whether it's permanent or contract, you know, I think it's, I'm super grateful. And I think for me, I was in a stage of my career where I, you know, I think it comes with experience and perhaps a little bit of age. <laughs> you kind of didn't get clear about what you, what is important to you. And for me, I felt like, like Microsoft, it was certainly like a perfect match, you know, in terms of it, vision, mission, you know, objectives and values, right? So for me, yes, I'm a very commercial marketer. I think it's important to deliver value, you know, boost revenue, but equally, I, for me, it's important to work for a company where it's not just about selling and, and it's about, you know, the customers, the employees, the community. And, uh, and that's something that is not just written on the wall. That is something that I experience every day. Um, so, so that's something that is, you know, for me, it's, it's very important. And uh, I think Claire also mentioned in her presentation that when you look for a job, you know, look for organization that inspires you, right? That is doing something good in the world. So, uh, so that is something as well, you know, perhaps when you're starting out, you know, you're building an experience, you may be, you know, you, you're not in that position yet, but that's okay. Right. I think my advice is, doesn't matter if you are, you know, an assistant, if you are a waitress, if you are the head of marketing, you always do your best. Go to the job, not just thinking about what you can get, but what you can give, 
right? What you can give to your employer, what can you give to your colleagues, because that is going to come back to you naturally, you know? So I know, sorry, I get excited. It's a bit long. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's great. That, thank you. That's a brilliant answer. Okay. Right, so can I run for you? That's okay. Um, we've talked quite positively throughout, which is, which is great, but obviously the reality is that people do get setbacks. Um, so what, uh, what would you say, what sort of recommendations would you give for people to motivate themselves during an unsuc unsuccessful job hunt? Yeah, I think it, I mean, from my side, right, I think it, if I'm very honest here, I had so many setbacks in my life, you know, so to start with, when I was 10 years old, my youngest brother was born with a very serious disease. So he never walked, talked, and there was no cure. I helped my parents to raise him for 13 years before he passed away, and it was very difficult for me. So for him, right, that was a big setback. But what I took away is that he was, you know, in pain, and he was always smiling. He was just positive. So that, you know, I've learned a lot from him. You know, moving here to the UK, I had a great job in Brazil. And here, you know, even when I was studying, I worked in restaurants, you know, I, uh, as a waitress, all of this. And for me, it was always like, okay, uh, what can I learn? How can I grow? You know, having this growth mindset. And, and I have to say, like, I applied for so many different jobs. I got so many no's in my career, you know, and I have to say in the beginning, you know, I even cried. <laughs> now I think after, you know, after a while I got used to it and don't take personal. But there will be, you know, there will be setbacks and there will be things that you don't expect. So, so that is, I think for me, my advice is that feel the pain because it sucks. Right when things don't work out or when things are out of your control or you were rejected, it's painful. So yes, feel the pain, but then see what did you learn from it and how can you apply that to the next role, whether it is again in your career or in your personal life. So for me, adopting a growth mindset is this, is like you know helps you to get through the difficult times in your life. Thank you, uh, Claire. Anything to add to that? I follow that. Um, uh, I, I think the key is to try and find the positive and the learn from every opportunity. So if you've had an interview and you, you feel you've not been successfully offered the role, please insist you get some feedback, some constructive feedback. Um, was it your answering technique? Was it was there just someone was a bit more experienced than you? What did the interview you like about what you said because we're often very good uh, if we're not careful at giving the reasons why you didn't uh, get to the next stage as opposed to the reasons why you might get to the next stage the next time so i would take a learn from every single thing you do so if if you send a cv and you don't hear from an organization call them uh, you know and un understand the way that they they take cvs through it might be a call to them what they might say we won't reply to people that we're, that we're not going to call to interview. Be sure you understand the process if it's an interview situation. Be sure you understand um, the, the, the beginning to end of that process. Be sure you understand also as much as you can about the place you want to be. Um, and also you will have overcome um, uh, upsets in your life to date. Uh, obviously Pamela talked about a very sad and tragic one there. But you all have something that you've overcome. Think back to how you overcome that. And it's that learning again, take the learn from it. What did I do actually that made me feel more positive about the future? Um, and I think a lot of what um, Pamela touched on when she talked about, you know, reticular activating systems, there are quite a lot of very um, simple, straightforward techniques that you can use um, to actually not just build confidence, but actually look at where you can make positive change potentially in some of your some of your some of your own lives, not just at work. And there's quite a few um, free courses actually on um, the Hayes website. But again, we can send the um, link for that if that if that helps. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, unfortunately, we are running out of time. Uh, probably just under a minute now. Um, so uh, thank you very much again to Claire and Pamela. That was really insightful. Uh, so we'll be back with our next uh, marketing club webinar: binge marketing the best scenario for building your brand. And that's on the 17th of November, starting at 6.30. And finally, I would like to say thank you very much again to Claire, Pamela, that was brilliant. And thank you everybody to uh, joining. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. <laughs>